Hello. Hello, hello. Just you and me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope someone I'm else. Machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not mine. Let's wait a bit. It would be really boring to keep a demo for you. <laughs> yeah, I've already seen it. <laughs> But actually, like, I don't know, some weird thing actually happened to me when I prepared the demo. So I was going to demonstrate it with two pods, like requesting two different PVCs. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that like for, for the second one, uh, the request is coming with the parameters from the first PVC. I, I didn't get it, so I, I just gave up, but it's uh, I, I don't know why, because it's like uh, the, the pod is uh, definitely referring the each pod refers each own PVC, and there are like different parameters for this uh, AFU ID FPJ in PVCs, but when volume is created, like the same parameters like come like every time. I don't know why. That's not like great. a proper demo effect to me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try to avoid that. But yeah, yeah box, box, box. Yeah. It's a proof of concept, nothing more. Yeah. We'll see. If, if yeah. People not looking very good though. Ah, uh, okay, we got Sasha. Sasha, we can demonstrate yeah, for every, you. everything for you, <laughs> at least. Marcus. It's not, not getting much better, it's still just into folks. Hey. Is this well, me turning <laughs> I don't know say it what uh, it will be meeting oh. today, but I don't see him online yet. Let's wait. So what do you guys think of my sewing machine? It's beautiful, isn't it? Good. <laughs> Don't you have one? I don't. Do you use it? Yeah, it's used very often. Or by you. It wouldn't be. So, you. Yeah, I have to admit, <laughs> it's not really. <laughs> I think. Okay. okay. There's like two machines actually there. The other one, it's not called a sewing machine. I don't know what it is really. It's related, it has threats. I know how it's called, but don't ask me why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know more than me then. <laughs> I don't know what's in English. So, I think in English it's overwhelming. Yeah, that's the Finnish name, that's the Finnish name, I, yeah. I've heard it. Right, let me try to think for a moment. Overlocker, okay. Overlock sewing machine. Well, that was pretty good if you found it from somewhere, Calbert. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, this is sanakire.org. At least that, that thing. Overlocker, yeah, well, you always learn something new. So how's life in the NFT side of things? You've got your, what was it? Helm chat. Helm chart. Oh, yeah, yeah, there was a typo, typo in yes. there. Yeah, there was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah that one starts, started to look pretty good. So just waiting for the documentation update there. Then we'll get it merged. And then we have this multiple NFT instances or multiple parallel NFT instances support. Well, hopefully coming. That was interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, uh, that might make, it probably make sense in some some deployment. You can just I guess so. Like use deployments created by some third parties and fire them without looking that much or without merging like configurations manually or anything like that. So yeah, might yeah. Let's see. It's not ideal, I, I would say. Probably we should going forward find a way to like drop in this like or multiple 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 configurations more easily through CRDs or some some other way. But at least that that, that should now be a, like quick fix, quick fix for the problem. And then yeah, on an FDR trying to trying to also enable the or make it possible to use cert manager to manage the CLS certificates yeah I guess that's gaining popularity uh, so uh, yeah it would be nice to actually have it everywhere then yeah yeah and it Mikko, Mikko already took a look at that and like provided an initial patch and it's from the NFD Basically, from the NFT side, the cert manager itself requires very little work. So, I mean, the problem is that NFT doesn't support this kind of certificate rotation. So, it doesn't at the moment understand that the certificates might change. So, that's, that's the problem. So, that needs to be solved. But after, after that's solved, then dropping in cert manager is, is really piece of cake. So I yeah, I like like that solution. Yeah, there's so so many people now that oh we got Reno. Great. I was already starting to think that we'll have a demo for Intel folks only. <laughs> well if there would be enough people already. Yeah, you got much better background than I have. I have a sewing machine. We can't hear you, Reno. You're mute. Sorry, no. morning, Mike. Hey, um, good morning. Good morning. Um, I think Alex mentioned that there was a demo on the agenda. You wanted to present you. Indeed. Yeah, uh, we actually we have a demo today. Uh, I was hoping what we will get a bit more people <laughs> because right now it just looks like into internal <laughs> plus Kurono. Yeah. Well, at least we got the chair. And basically, I mean, Reno started the CDI work, so you know you are the most important, but. Uh, yeah, sure. It certainly would be nice to have others as well. Let me ping a bit around. All right. Um, I think I also wanted to kind of like have some feedback on the logos. Uh, maybe what we can do is I can present the logos. It's going to take five minutes. And then you, if in these five minutes people join, then we'll, we, we'll, we'll probably have more minutes. Mike Brow has another engagement this morning. And maybe you're back. Yeah, Monal, Monal as well. Yeah. OK. Uh, what, what do you want to do, Yuri? Do you want to present your demo, or do you want to um, like go through some of the logos? And wait a little uh, bit. Reno, I would suggest let's first talk about logo and when we okay. switch topics. Uh, logos is actually a fun topic. Uh, and it's going to take five minutes. Let me share my screen. Shit. All right. Um, so 
for full context, these logos were um, designed by the NVIDIA creative department. Uh, we did have a big meeting with them in terms of making sure that the different logos that they come up with do not include NVIDIA visual elements. Uh, I mean, the main one being, we did not want them to kind of use the NVIDIA colors. Uh, we, we, we spent a lot of time making, with them making sure that they understood that it's a process that it is with the community. And the goal is to kind of like present you with options and the community is kind of the final decider on this, um, not NVIDIA. So we're really just here to kind of, at least the NVIDIA creative department is here to kind of um, help us come up with a logo and um, we are the decider. There's in no way kind of like NVIDIA involvement here. We, we're trying to be kind of neutral. Um, some of the kind of um, keywords that we brainstormed a bit with them to come up with different options are like the dev our device container. Um, node, I think like, I don't have the notes with the, from that meeting with me, but uh, we spent different time just like uh, discussing a bit what are kind of visual elements that we would like to see. Um, one of them came, that came up was funnel, the other one being container, uh, being the two main thing, container queue. And I think the images are kind of like what um, the artist ins uh, got inspired from out of these keywords. They came up with kind of three different options uh, at first. Um, black and white, uh, because uh, I think the, the conversation that they wanted to start with us was, oh, are these kind of like logos, are the shapes here something that we kind of interest, or that we feel interested in? So the first one, I think they tried to represent a funnel. The second one, um, they wanted to represent a container and um, the fact that it was augmented to layers. Um, and the third one is kind of a wild card, um, which we found very interesting um, just because of the kind of visual elements of seeing the cube both as just a shadow on top of these three cubes and as a, an actual cube on top of these three cubes, if that makes sense. Um, out of these three options, um, they kind of like tried to uh, color it. Um, and so you can see the different colors here. Um, and they gave an example of how it would look like um, if um, CDI actually became uh, one of the projects that you see on the Cloud Native uh, on the CNTF website. So this is um, option A, this is option B, and this is option C. And I'm gonna actually pause more on this one and let, let everyone just look at them and have this sink in a little, a little bit. Cool. All right. Option, um, option. See somehow catches my eye. So a little bit of feedback that we we got internally was that option A looks a little bit too much like a an EWS logo. Um, so that's kind of a small concern that we do have. <laughs> um, Yeah, I think generally we'll probably, I think uh, process-wise, uh, it might be worth sending an email to the whole uh, community to kind of have like a formal vote. Uh, what's what's everyone's opinion on just process? Uh, maybe process we can take, we can talk a bit later, but are there people who have some feedback on option A, B, or C? I like visually version C, but the colors, I think B2 is the most appealing for me in color schema. Maybe B3. Mm -hmm. But but the shape is definitely C. I yeah, would, uh, oh, yeah that's my opinion that. as well, if you ask me. I, I don't have my notes from the previous meeting, but one of the kind of framework 
that creative kind of gave me to evaluate and, and give some feedback on Mogo is the first thing that they kind of were interested in is like outside of the colors, do we like these the 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 the, the concept that these logos represent? Um, are we are we attracted by the idea of a funnel or the idea of a container that is layered on top, or maybe kind of this idea of um, option C kind of feels like it's a box that has more boxes, so it's a box augmented also. Um, are these kind of visual elements that we think make sense, or do we care more about a specific visual um, ID? Well, conceptually, I, li I like option B because it's like uh, with with those like layers above the container, so it kind of maps to the idea from my point yeah. of view. But uh, option C is more attractive visually. I would say it's kind of more rich. <laughs> visually, I definitely agree. There's an interest in option C. Uh, it's kind of it's intriguing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I think that's, no, that was kind of a question. Yeah. For option C, did we try to do like this, um, like what center black cube to make it bigger? when the like the rest of ones can you repeat that so like right now it it looks like similar to version a but with uh like solid colors on the edges and uh like smaller cube inside mm -hmm. so if if we try to do this uh like center cube as a bigger one and those uh of like leaf scoops, smaller ones, it might be, uh, it might be a bit, might be, might be more interesting, I don't know. Okay. I think one of the things that I kind of noticed is that the appeal of the black and white option C kind of gets lost with the colors. For some reason, it seems like um, this, this kind of like, visual intriguing element in option C yeah. kind of gets gets lost a bit with the colors. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I agree. Those colors yeah. are not that great. But what's interviewing is option C is really that you can like look it in multiple ways. So yeah. You can see that yeah. As 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 like a shadow a center cube or then I wonder if it's a good uh, if it's a good thing for a logo though. I don't know. It might be. Well, probably, I'm not all right. Bad. Um, I think that's pretty much it for logos. Um, keep in mind also that it's interesting to see how it's going to fit with the others. Feel free to go over the slides there in the agenda. Um, Google Doc that I'm going to copy paste right now and they're in the and I will give back control of the oh actually someone already copy pasted the agenda I will give back control of the presentation um Nukri, do you want to kind of, and you're Rishi joined that's awesome thank you um um, I, I think that it is going to start this one. Uh, well, I I would propose that Sasha would start to explain, like briefly explain the the idea, the, the architecture, and then mm -hmm. I will uh, kind of uh, like show this, uh, the small, simple demo to understand it conceptually. And then Ukri will show like more complex uh, demo scenario. Uh, all right, so uh, I don't have any slides for that, but uh, just to... Just a couple of words. Were... So yeah, a couple of words. So, Renaud, remember when we started uh, talking about what, how to CGI would look like, uh, we had the idea of using uh, custom resource uh, definitions to actually uh, describe the kind of request for device attributes. So 
So something what we can put uh, as many of, of device properties as we want, like uh, like GPU memory, GPU time, if we want, when uh, FPGA uh, bitstream names and yada yada. yada. Uh, but the problem is what to introduce such big change uh, to the Kubernetes, it's, uh, well, it's problematic. So we wanted to show uh, or to have some of like proof of concept where we can demonstrate the idea. Uh, and uh, when starting from that idea, evolve it to something what can be uh, written as a cap or as a like re real proposal. So uh, what we took, uh, as, as we agreed earlier, so we took the CDI as a bottom layer. Uh, so the, the way how it works, what uh, we have uh, run C, which reads the CDI specification and when exposed it to a container. Uh, we have uh, a bit customized version of run C because we have uh, also the GPU related properties and like for something which is, uh, it's discussed upstream kernel, but not yet in the upstream kernel yet. So we can uh, we can show some uh, like bits out of it. Um, but the question is how we create the OCDI specs and we created the node agent uh, which uh, writes with JSON uh, for, for this container. Uh, but when we piggyback on the storage paradigms on actually to uh, demonstrate the user visible UX. So you have a pod spec, you have uh, the pod spec referring to uh, device as a volume for now, right? You have uh, similar to the storage uh, request where you can specify I want particular class of device. I want particular properties of this claim. And I want to use this claim uh, um, between like in, in either in one container or between multiple pods or between multiple containers in this pod and so on. Um, so practically what we have is uh, similar to a storage uh, object model for the device claims. So we, we have a uh, node agent, we have a central controller, which can uh, hide the vendor uh, specific logic. Uh, and we have a proper integration with a scheduler. So scheduler knows exactly where a device can be allocated. But I, I know like just with words, it's, it's hard to understand. So I hope what uh, Ed and uh, Ukri will show over demos and you, like based on examples, you, you will get a better idea how it works. Yeah, let me continue with, from this. So let me share my screen. But before I begin, so the, the storage paradigm, we just use it as a simplest way to showcase. We already found out like several, um, well, I would say design issues, which is okay for the storage, but will not be applicable for the devices. So we, we collected those items and when we will be transforming it to a like normal idea, we, we will need to work around that or design it better to make it more generic, okay? Uh, give me a minute, guys. So the Zoom doesn't allow me sh to share like because of the settings. So I need to like reload it. Just, 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 a, just a minute. Okay. I hope I don't hit the same. Mm, I think Red is using Marcos. That's why it's. Oh yeah. It's problematic. Damn software. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like a, a, Apple fight for the privacy. <laughs> of course, that's 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 how we that's how we position it. Yeah. All right. Looks like it is able to show. 
at if you can make a font bigger. Uh -huh. I was mute, so is it okay this way? Hello. Okay, okay. Well, hello. It looks good to me. Okay. Okay. So let's let's go. So the the idea is to basically use uh, CDI uh, kind of objects uh, to <clears throat> to show the like resource allocation and management uh, approach, like uh, without actually uh, creating. Uh, CRDs and referencing them because that that would require a lot of uh, a lot more work. So it's it's and this is what I'm going to demonstrate. So first of all is just a, like little setup overview. So we have a, a cluster with two nodes uh, and we have pretty much control plane running and just uh, and. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and these two services. The first one is the controller. So it's basically, it's just one instance usually for the cluster. It collects the information about the devices from the node agents. And as we have only master and one node, we have uh, also this node agent bot running. Uh, that, that basically runs on the node, scans the available devices and uh, provides them to the controller. And on this node, we have two FPGA nodes. So I will demonstrate the FPGA uh, device allocation. So we have uh, two devices here. So this is like port zero device and port one device. And then this device knows is actually uh, consumable resources from the user work workflow point of view. And uh, what differs between those? So there, there are two parameters here, like to pay attention to. Like first one is interface uh, UUID. is It's the same. It's basically ID of the device, like in simplified term. So we have two uh, uh, like devices of the same kind. Uh, so uh, and this uh, second parameter is accelerator. UUID and that's uh, that differs here and th that is uh, ID of the function which is a flash at integer device. So if PG, uh, if PGA is a programmable device, so it's uh, currently like uh, two devices they are programmed with two different functions. And that function is basically uh, will be used uh, uh, as a as a parameter. So like. Uh, Let's let's see uh, how exactly. So, like first first of all, uh, we uh, create a storage class. So let's look at uh, how it's uh, organized. So we have like uh, storage class parameters. So with device type, FPGA, vendor, Intel. And the interface ID, which is basically what what I've showed, so it specifies the device, so the like device cl class, if you will. And then, so we create it, and that's uh, that. That is usually uh, should be done by cluster admin. Uh, next piece, uh, by the way, Reno, you can interrupt me like any time if uh, if you need like some no worries, one more listening. details. Yeah. So next uh, piece is uh, PVC. Uh, it's a persistent volume claim, and we are using it to basically specify what the user workload would want. So the user workload would re re uh, refer to this PVC to uh, to get the device allocated and. and it will, oh, we can hear you now. Am I am I back? Okay. <laughs> so and this uh, AFU ID is basically that that. Uh, is, uh, I'm back again. Sorry for that. 
So this FU ID is that parameter. So user workload uh, wants uh, some particular uh, accelerator function uh, to utilize, and that's. Uh, but uh, the software is basically organized. Uh, the way that uh, those parameters can be like arbitrary so and it's just up to the node controller to understand uh, those parameters so the rest of the software like uh, cent central controller for uh, for it it's just uh, like list of uh, like key value uh, key keys and values and that's it so for um, next thing so so we basically created this PVC. And the very last thing is uh, to run the workload. So that, that pod uh, actually uh, refers to the, uh, to the claim, like uh, to the PVC this way by, by the name. That's it. Now, it doesn't do anything. It just like runs busy box. Uh, but the, the idea is to like to see if the device actually like after uh, all of these manipulations, if the device, if PGA device is accessible from inside the container. And that's we can see here, hopefully. <clears throat> Uh, so we can see that uh, like the device with the with the requested uh, function ID is uh, like became available inside the con uh, uh, container. The like so use user. Can you show me again the pass Sorry. Can you show me again the pass spec for a second? Uh, show what? The pass -spec. specification. Ah, okay. <laughs> So I don't know. You the, have a, only a, a ID, ID. ID. Yeah. Uh, the only interesting wait, wait. thing here is uh, like the, this part, the claim name. So that's the reference to the PVC, and PVC actually holds the the request, the set of parameters that the uh, user workload uh, requests. What's in slash CDI? Is it the CDI specification? If, if you do an LS in the pod of slash CDI, sorry, it's, I, I understand the thing. It's just the slash CDI strikes me as odd for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a temporary word workaround. Yeah, yeah. So because it's a volume, so we we need to somehow like use it, and the only way to use it is to actually specify it as a like as a mount pass. But that 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 could be like anything. Uh, we are I not see. using it. Like, so it's yes, just I a see. way. To, yeah. yeah, it's just a way to I say that, that that we want like this kind of volume. That that is uh, uh, provided like by by this uh, persistent volume claim. Okay, That's I see. It. Sorry, this is just. My brain was not computing this thing. It just it was <laughs> it was cycling like this, and and now like now now it just like it, it got mm -hmm. it. Okay, keep going. So, uh, well, that's basically it. <laughs> I, I don't know what what else. So I uh, my idea was to like uh, prepare uh, as uh, simplest uh, demo as possible to uh, to show the concept is like like very simple simplified way so and the the next part would be like um, probably uh, more understandable to you as it, it will be about gpu <laughs> uh, but it's it's more complex i would say so if if you have some kind of like simple like conceptual questions i can answer now if not then we can switch to ukri uh, and Ukri will uh, will demo uh, this GPU case, but this okay. is like like very simple case. So one parameter, the function ID, and and practically that's it. Yeah. So uh, conceptually, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The biggest concept is what uh, like we are splitting where. Uh, two pieces, like one piece is, uh, well, actually three pieces. One piece is 
we have devices with the classes and we can have multiple of them and we have a provision or like vendor specific provision or which uh, handles those. Second thing, we uh, split out the allocation phase. So user declares, I want this kind of devices with uh, this set of parameters. And the third piece is in the pod spec, we are saying, okay, now I'm going to use this allocation, what I created with my needed parameter. Um, so, I do have a question actually. Um, so let's say this is kind of the, new way of doing devices. How, how does that validate or invalidate the old way? Uh, we actually oh. don't need to do it. So it, it can be done uh, like in granularly. parallel <laughs> or granularly. So that it doesn't depend on device plugin in, uh, in any way. So you can either use those like for simple cases, but as soon as you have like more parameters, you want to use them, then then uh, that's that's the way to go from our point of view. So, and because I think that's going to be one of the first questions that we get is, do we want to be maintaining two different systems? Um, I don't think we, we will be really, like, really maintaining because based on the current state of the device plugin code, it's not changing much all, all over the time. So like, remember when, when the last time it was changed, maybe like a year ago or something. So, um, I think for some time it will kind of coexist in a parallel uh, until uh, what community will actually decide what what's the, the future. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's just uh, you know like way to present it. So if uh, if community likes it, I believe we we can find the way how to actually proceed further. So if I think yeah, I think the next step would be to kind of present this at signal. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's in our plans. Okay, so I will. Yeah, stop remember, sharing. Yeah. remember, we discussed it. What we we will first discuss it in a smaller group when we when with few key people and when we go to a bigger audiences. Completely agree. Um, I think we, we do need to I support this and I'm happy to kind of like help put it to a signal. Um, but first let's let's look what Ukri has. I think Renault okay, like so for you it will be more more, more appealing. <laughs> Yeah, like Ed said, this is a more complex setup. So this is for GPUs. And also we have a little bit more of a more of a cluster here since it's just not just one node plus plus the controller. This is three nodes that we have here. Um, and I, by the way, I don't have anything recorded. So it, it either works or it doesn't. We may have demo effects. So uh, three nodes identified by labeling them with storage equals CDI. There are two NUCs and then there's one a little bit bigger machine. And uh, there's some GPUs in them. In total four, uh, the NUCs just have one and this CMLS machine has two GPUs in it. So um, at the top, you can see ports which happen to have CDI in their names. Uh, these GPUs, um, I basically hard coded the uh, code so that each GPU gets like four gigabytes of memory. It's like fake, but anyway, it's a value. Um, and they get 1000 millicores. So for four GPUs, that totals 16 gigs in the whole cluster plus 4000 millicores available. Now, if we look at the uh, YAML at the bottom left corner, there's a deployment for basically 10 replicas over there. Uh, again, we're doing just a busy box with the same tricks as, as Ed showed. Uh, the idea just being, does it mount the cards properly or not? Uh, there's a little bit of trickery going on with the volumes. Now we're using ephemeral inline volumes. Why are we doing that? Well, that's because if we didn't, 
the normal volumes, if you have multiple replicas, you don't get per pod instance volumes necessarily. So that's why we do this with the ephemeral inline volumes. With these, you actually get per pod instance volumes. Now, what you're probably interested in is like, you know, what, what are these? So we've defined here that each pod gets 1.5 gigs of RAM and 300 millicores. If we do the math, the cluster had 16 gigs. So basically, you know, it's more than, you know, asking 10 of these. But since each of these GPUs only have has four gigs of RAM, you can basically only serve two pods out of one GPU, right? So uh, the math is that with four GPUs and two pods each, uh, you can only get eight pods up. So out of the 10 replicas, the expectation is that two of them should stay pending if everything works. So let's see, I'm shooting this up and things start happening. And we got the expected end result. There's two pending bots, they didn't get scheduled. And what is of course interesting as well is like, did they get proper devices or was it just, you know, random? I have a little script, which doesn't seem to be working today. So that part of, we got the demo effect over there. Let's see. That was just a user error. It needs the deployment name. Okay, so. Um, the expectation in, in this printout is that uh, we should have two lines for the card one, basically. On, the, only the CMLS1 machine had two GPUs, as you can see from here. And both of these cards should have two ports. So basically in here, we should have two card ones over there and over there. And they should be running in the CMLS machine. We can check this W98 starting thing is in the CMLS. That's correct. And the same over here, 5TH starting thing is running in the CMLS. So it worked. No demo effects here. Um, awesome. It looks it looks super interesting. Yeah, so I hope you liked it. Uh, unfortunately, though, the uh, storage does create a lot of headaches. Namely, if we try things like giving two GPUs for a single port, uh, we fail. Basically, we would need a scheduler extender to support this, as long as we use this storage paradigm. And the same happens if we have two containers inside a pod, which use the GPU separatedly, same issue, because the volumes are created one by one and you would basically need a scheduler extender to help. Reason being that when you're considering them one by one, you don't necessarily understand that you cannot allocate the second one anymore. So it gets complicated there. Storage as such is not the best for this kind of thing, even though it does work nicely when you have just, you know, one GPU being allocated. I see. Um, so um, yeah, going but, forward, uh, the yeah, 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 go ahead, Sasha. So uh, as I mentioned, we found several, uh, well, corner cases where the storage doesn't work properly. So for example, like one volume can be easily shared between multiple pods on the same node. And for our devices allocation, we should prevent with this kind of scenario. Uh, and then like uh, read once or read multiple times, uh, overall sharing between the uh, pods. It, we, we will need to have a bit more sophisticated logic on the scheduler side, on the controller side, when we allocating with, when we're dealing with devices, but just for simple 
showcase of simple demo, I think it's good enough to demonstrate the concept. Yep, yep. and yeah. this is definitely using CDI as, as you know the, the means, so there's no no device plugins here. And you know, I can take this a little further. I applied another deployment over there. Obviously, uh, it ended up pen pending. It's these two over here, this one. And uh, if I now delete the first one, then if everything works, eventually it should get deployed. Uh, there may be some demo effects here. It's a bit, little bit slow to delete this, but if we're lucky, it might actually work in a minute or two. You never know how long it really takes. So what do you think? I think it looks awesome. It's going to be very interesting to 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 introduce these capabilities. Uh, there's, from a user perspective, it's it's going to be transformative, especially as we have more and more devices that are being able to be shareable. From an engineering perspective, an architecture perspective, I I, I think the the battle is going to be interesting to kind of enable this in Kubernetes, given that it touches. Um, scheduler and node at the same time. Yeah, uh, for this proof of concept, we didn't touch the scheduler that much, but like Sasha says, if we do this properly, then unfortunately that site needs a little bit of tweaking, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, one, one of uh, the things why why I push it for, for this kind of concept is what I would like to make it as a generic object which can be referenced from the pod. Yeah, so devices yeah, yeah, is a yeah, good yeah. is a, is is a good example. But uh, if if we do it right, when later on even the storage can be converted to the same interface. Yeah, this was a short one. I don't have anything else to demonstrate, so I guess I'll stop sharing. I mean, this is super interesting. Thank you so much for, for presenting. What, how do you want to drive this out? Well, first of all, I want to make sure what next time we uh, we met, actually, we have a, uh, people from uh, Container D from Cryo, and I would like to have a proper presentation with some in? slides. Huh? Do you want to pull them in Sorry? for next time? Yeah, well, I was hoping what at least like Mike and Ronal will be today here, but I'll, I'll probably ping them for, for the next meeting. Yeah, I think I think we need to be a bit more maybe, um, we need to plan a bit more of these meetings. I tend to send the agenda less than 24 hours before we should probably plan them like a week before. Yeah. Um, have, have an agenda ready. Um, that would so uh, after after we show it to Mike and Ronald, we need to find or uh, let's say select few people with, with whom we have to have a first run. Uh, I don't know, like Derek uh, uh, from your side, uh, probably Kevin. Uh, I don't know who else might be interested in, in this particular project. So like w very small set of people who who can say yeah, like can yes or no. Kevin. Kevin, I, Kevin should probably also kind of start joining. Um, so I'll definitely make sure that he's invited and has is aware of everything. Um, yeah. Makes sense. So we have 10 minutes. I did want to kind of talk through a bit the Podman implementation that I have, which is like this demo that I came up uh, in September. And I wanted to kind of discuss a little bit about things that we can probably improve and how we're going to kind of structure everything. So kind of the first thing that I want to talk about is more the API. Let me see if Unified is better. Um, the API that Podman is going to see. Um, so what I'm going to do is just everything that's in CBI is not interested and in, is not interesting. Um, there were like a few injection points in Podman um, that I wanted to point out. Um, the first one is um, container create. 
Um, so container creates is um, kind of the point where the container gets uh, created. And this is where we need to extract the CDI devices. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, no, continue to create is, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting context back from, from, from all of this. Um, here, um, what we're doing is we are iterating over the different devices. If um, the device is part of CDI, then we kind of add it to a list. And at the end of the day, we update the spec with the CDI devices. Uh, and so what that means is that, um, so taking a step back, we iterate over all the um, devices that are in the spec. So these devices are typically in the shape of device nodes, uh, but if they're not a device node, if they're an actual name, so if it refers to a name that we find in um, the CDI specification, um, then we know that it's a CDI device. And so we add that name to this list of um, devices. And from there, we kind of have this function that is um, provided um, with, with CDI basically, that allows us to kind of, um, what's it called? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. That allows us to uh, update the specification, if that makes sense. Right. No. Okay. <laughs> Is does this function kind of make sense to people? As an API. No, it looks okay, but uh, in which in which place you are verifying what it's not the uh, like uh, official device name like dev something. Is it um, this has device? Or? That would be kind of a bit. Later, probably here has device. Okay. So this one's kind of a, another question that we need to figure out as a group. Um, right now, every time we call has device, I'm going to par parse all the files. So there's probably a little device basically just reads through all the files, reads the devices. There's a few questions we might want to ask ourselves as just like, should we be providing context so that the, the map that we build out of these files is kept? We don't rebuild it every time. Uh, and the other one being, um, I mean, the other one being like, of course, we could just like has device with an array of strings. Um, <clears throat> so, um, well, that's kind of optimization, like, but we can, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Um, and I think the last one that I want to talk about is the specification. Uh, right now, I re-implemented the kind of um, the OCI structures, um, but we might want to discuss um, if we want to have the CDI basically just have the OCI structures imported. So refer to kind of OCI.devices in the container edits. So devices, OCI dot Linux devices. Uh, we, we still need container edits because we have uh, like hooks, mounts, environment variables. So I, I don't think okay. OCI device structure will be enough. Okay. Because a lot of the code actually ends up being, uh, or some code actually ends up being, is it here? Yeah. Ends up being, when you say apply OCI edits, some code, ends up being just two OCI hook, two OCI mount, two OCI device. All right, because at some point we do need to apply OCI edits to a spec based on container edits. Mm -hmm. So my, my thought process is to kind of move this CDI folder inside the CDI repository. So that includes these like kind of devices. And what you're gonna see in Podman is kind of these small edits. So the container struct now kind of comes around with the CDI device. Uh, if the CDI device, if you'll just here, we update the spec, 
And here uh, in the CLI, we kind of go over the different um, devices. We append them to that CDI device file field, and that's it. That's that's the that's the that's the changes that a podman would see. That sounds okay. At least, well, from my perspective, yeah, it's what was expected. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll of course refer to GitHub.com container orchestrated devices container device interface maybe slash package or slash spec. No. Okay, I mean, that kind of gives you an idea of how this is gonna materialize in Podman and long-term we'll see how it looks like in the NRI. Well, we, this, before we NRI will materialize properly, we can propose exactly the same scenario for cryo and for container D. Yeah. So I, 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 the time then. cryo and then container D, I think like the expectation is to go through NRI. Um, um I understand that. I'm just curious how long time it will take. So it, it might be easier to, to first get something uh right now working for both cryo container D and uh, Podman. And when yep. us, well, NRI will mature, when we change it to NRI. And to me, that's kind of up to Michael Crosby and what he wants to do. Uh, he's ultimately the person that kind of yeah. decides the architecture. If he wants us to go through NRI, then we'll go through NRI. If, he wants, if he's okay with us going through container D directly, then we'll go through container D and then maybe NRI later. I, I don't have an opinion on this. It's kind of up to him. My my single worry is what we shouldn't end up in this scenario. What uh, like Cryo and Podman adopt those changes, and Container D it will take uh, months or vice versa. So if if we have something, we need to have something working wanna, at the same time. Do you want to try and drive this? Do you want to try and drive this in container the implementation in Container D? Uh, let me answer next next weekend. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, before we go, uh, yep. <laughs> let's give Urwash actually a word. Like Urwash, what do you think about what Renault presented? Uh, no, I agree. I think the design is good. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll try to make a PR, a different PRs and tag you on both the Podman PRs and the CDI PRs. I think the CDI PR needs to go in first because just like in terms of path referral. Um, and maybe maybe I'll try to add some tests so that like we can, we, we actually have like some, like some days to compare against as we improve it. Yeah, that sounds good. Awesome. Is there anyone that wants to bring up um, something? Uh, I wanted to bring this uh, non-root devices uh, patches, what we had discussed a few months back. Uh, so Mika implemented the patches as we agreed, but we, we are lacking of uh, reviewers. So Reno, at least from your side, if you have time, please help with saying your words like yes or no. <laughs> Okay. And I will try to ping other people as well. I'll, All right. I'll, I'll, take a, I'll take a stab at it. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great one, everyone. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. So talk talk you in two weeks, right? Uh, well, yeah. hopefully, a bit earlier. Uh, we need to have it. I think let's let's do an agenda next Tuesday, like on Slack. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye.